second worthy is the Lord. Jesus name worthy you is are worthy Lord. father hallelujah thank you Lord glory and honor and praise yes. to the name of God the spirit of the Lord is here and where the spirit of the Lord is there's liberty Amen. Yes, hallelujah. I've come today saith the Lord to set my people free if you will believe and receive, you will be free. Yes, Father, we thank you for your word. Yes. As you lead us in this service today, yes. a little bit different than the past, may we just flow with the Holy Spirit yes. and let you be God yes. in our midst. Yes. And we want to thank you now. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Be prepared for the Lord to work and move today. Um, Rachel's going to sing now as we bring our tithes and offerings to the Lord. It's good to see Faith here today. Hey, Faith, good to see you. And I think everybody else is home, folks, aren't they? Any other visitors? Everybody's home, folks. That's good. Okay. Right. 
sort of lose it. You don't really lose it, but you don't sense it like you usually do. Either the world is too much in front of you, you're too much in the world, you're not enough in the Word or the Spirit. <laughs> I didn't plan that. That just happened. <laughs> How many likes my new stick? This is a unique. This is a un unique stick here. What happened to Andy? My, huh? What happened to Andy? I beg your pardon. Andy. Andy walked with me. What happened to you? But anyway, <laughs> this thing here has a different characteristic to it. I didn't know how to operate this thing, but oh, there we go. Look at that. It goes into a chair. See, when you get tired, what you can do, you can have a seat. <laughs> Rock of ages, cliff for me, let me hide myself in thee. Rock of ages, cliff for me. Let me hide myself in thee. Boy, I tell you, God's good. He? he knows what us old folks need, a rocking chair. I carry my rocking chair everywhere I go. Everybody, let's sing. Rock of ages, cliff for me. Let me rock myself in thee. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Anyway, that's the latest, the Tilton's family. But we got a lot to share today. There we go. We're not in no hurry, are we? We're not in no hurry, are we? <laughs> 
Put this over there out of the way. There we go. You know, God works in many different ways. And we have to learn the ways of God. And that takes sometimes a lifetime. You read the Bible, many people in the Bible had to learn. Many learned the easy way. Some learned the hard way. I've had both in my life. <laughs> I've learned many things the hard way. But as I get older, I've learned. And I'm still learning. God's way is the best way. Even though at the time, I don't favor it too much. But in the long run, it pays off. So you remember that. Susan, you got something you want to share about uh, the, not the word, but well, bring your word up too. I might let you share, start with. But put on the board. If, I think he just went out. Yeah, okay. What you got for us, darling? First of all, I would like, thank you, Pastor Bob. You're welcome. Good morning, come, everyone. I'll come closer to Daddy. <laughs> We do have a few announcements. You have been a very special, faithful, patient people. But today is your day. You will be getting the uh, financial report for 2022, and you will be getting, we have a new name for our prayer directory. It's a prayer and prayer telephone directory so that's how Bob and I have used it uh, since he had his surgery and we have found it to be a joy to get the telephone directory lay it before the Lord and lift everyone up dad mom boys girls the whole families Lift them up in prayer to God in the name of Jesus. And it's caused us to just have more love in our heart for every one of you. We love you with the love of the Lord. And uh, you will be getting that. And we would appreciate if everyone would go out to the front door at the end of the service. Uh, Kayla will be giving one of the uh, folders, and uh, Anderson will be giving the telephone directory. Kayla will give the yearly report, financial report for 2022. So, but we want everyone to wait until the end of the service because uh, you wouldn't want to be reading that during the service anyway. So. <laughs> And we want to thank Michelle Dodder, uh, Mike Wolf, Pastor Bob, and myself for putting the telephone prayer request uh, together. So you're finally getting it today. So I think that deserves a big hand. You have been, because you have been so patient. And we want to thank every one of you for everything that you do for the work of God here. Your heart is in it, and God sees everything that you do. He's at all places, at all times. He's with everyone. He watches us all, all during the day. He doesn't slumber nor sleep, but he's got his eye on you because he created you special. You are special. And we want everyone to know that. And he's with you. We don't have to be a lonely people. He is with us. We might not be able to see him with our eyes, physical eyes, but he's with us. And uh, I wanted to also let you know that God will recompense you. He has a full reward for every good deed 
that you do for yourself and for others. And uh, he will fully repay you. The Lord God of Israel will repay you for every good work that you do. And uh, Can I say something here, darling? Yeah. Since I got the mic, she don't stand a chance. But anyway, darling, it's like our Social Security. Yeah. You pay all your life and your Social Security. But how many glad is glad now that you paid it in? Raise your hand. Look, look at the hands go up. So some of your rewards you won't get now, but when you retire, you'll get your Social Security. When you get retire, you'll get your blessings from God. Now, he gives us many blessings along the way. Thank God for that. But many of the blessings will come throughout eternity of eternities that those blessings will go on forevermore. What you got, babe? Um. The reason I want to read 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20, is because I was in the bank when God spoke this word to me. Put this on the DVD now. Put it on, okay. This is the wonderful message he has given us to tell others. We are Christ's ambassadors, and we know that ambassadors are representatives. No matter where we are, what time of day or night, we are God's representatives, our ambassadors here on the earth. God is using us to speak to you. We beg you as though Christ himself were here pleading with you. Receive the love he offers you. Be reconciled to God. For God took the sin as Christ poured into him our sins. Then in exchange, he poured God's goodness into us. That touches my heart. <laughs> Mine too, darling. And Share this week what the Lord's been doing in the last two weeks, darling, with us. Uh, God has really been good using us as ambassadors. And you had a really good experience when you went to get your hair done uh, last week and well, also this week. Could I share about the remembers first? Sure. Okay. I took some booklets. We have four different kinds. We have Peace with God, Personal Bible Verses of Comfort, Assurance, and Salvation. What Must I Do to Be Saved? Let all your heart, let not your heart be troubled. And we took some, I, I prepared a basket and I put these books in the basket and I had them on a table at the memorial. memorial. So uh, everyone was welcome to get them and many of them were taken, but I had to bring some home which broke my heart. I was expecting an empty basket to come home. And anyway, but anyway, I praise God anyway for those that were taken. And then I had never seen a, per, a, per, um, a person in person playing the bagpipes. I've watched them on TV, but this guy come walking in playing a I don't know what the tune was, but it was beautiful. And it would make your hair stand on your head. And the next song he played was How Great Thou Art. It was absolutely beautiful. No one sang that song, but it's like the bagpipes spoke every word to this con to about 250 people were there. So we got a great blessing, but when they start, he started playing How Great Thou Art, the tears started falling. Different ones had to get the tissues, and I was one of them. <laughs> but anyway, 
I do enjoy giving out these booklets. We've been giving them out since what year, Bob? In the 50s. In the 50s, we've been. This is the one we had in uh, 2050, yeah. And, uh, but we give them all out at different times. We just pick them up when we are on our way. And I'm excited about tomorrow, Tuesday, not Monday, Tuesday, we're going to uh, VA for your checkup. And I, I usually give out about 20 of them when we're there. And it, I'm excited about Tuesday. So anyway, the reason I wanted to bring out that scripture on uh, we are ambassadors, I was in the bank and I was in line and um, in my mind, you are an ambassador for Christ. I said, me? I'm an ambassador for Christ. An ambassador is a representative. You mean I'm a representative for Christ right here in line at the bank? Yes. I, stepped, I looked in my purse. I did not have one booklet. I can't believe it. And I stepped out of line. I knew I had some booklets in the car. I went to the car and got my booklets. And I praise God, there's some in the car. And uh, I got them. I walked back in the bank. And I started at the last person. And I said, I've read this little book all the way through, and I was so blessed, and I want to give you one. And they said, oh, thank you. And they took the booklet, and I went to the next person. I read this little booklet all the way through, and I was so blessed. It made me want to give everybody one. Would you like one? Oh, thank you. And I went all the way around, and I gave a booklet out to everyone that was in the bank that day. And I walked out of that bank. Uh, God, thank you. Thank you for giving me that thought. And to step out and to go to the car and get the booklets. And you lost your place in the line and went to the end of the line. Absolutely. Prefer others over yourself. <laughs> and uh, one day I was at the card counter at the store and uh, I was looking for a son-in-law card and a daughter card because we have five birthdays in August and uh, I usually like to have mine ahead of time all laid out and ready and uh, as I was looking for the cards, this other lady was over to my right. She was looking for cards. She needed four cards. And, um, and I got my booklet out. I don't know which one I gave her. And um, she was looking at the cards. I said, I've read this card all the way through, and I was so blessed. I want to give everybody one. And I said, would you like one? Oh, yeah. She looked at it. Oh, yeah. And I would like three more for my other cards I'm sending out. So I don't know where that booklet ended up in the United States. <laughs> it was awesome. I'm just having the biggest time. And then, um, oh, goodness, I was in Lowe's Food one day. I was at the banana counter. And I, had my, I make sure I have my booklets when I go in there because I give out so many booklets at Lowe's Food. And uh, I was checking some bananas, making sure I got the ones that were, had some green in it, you know, so they wouldn't get too ripe on me before we consumed them. And um, I had my booklets ready. I saw this guy, he was about, 40 years old, he was looking for uh, his bananas. And 
It was the one peace with God that I had with me that day. And uh, when I gave it to him, I said, I've read this little book of it all the way through, and it blessed me so much, I wanted to give everybody one. I said, would you like, like one for yourself? And, oh, yeah. He said, oh, God. He held it to his chest. He said, oh, God, this is what I've needed. Peace with God. And uh, he took it, and I would have prayed with him, but it was in the store, and he was a man, so I just gave it to him. I said, I just saw in my heart he had lots of problems and we could have probably prayed for a while but I didn't and uh, but we've prayed for him when I got home I told my husband about this man and at the banana counter and how he just held the Bible up to his heart and he said oh thank you God this is what I needed and so we're still praying for this man. That that's some, what Willie preached on last week. Willie preached on the peace of God last week. That's true, yeah. Willie. You yeah. sure did. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what that man needed was peace with God. And then, um, let's see. Uh, Would you get your hair done, remember? Okay. On Friday, I usually go and my hairdresser does my hair. And... Uh, I just normally got out of the car, came in, and she takes care of me. And uh, she was almost finished with me. And this other lady comes in carrying a black bag with these uh, plastic things you put up your nose. Oxygen. Oxygen. And she was, when she sat down, um, she put it in her nose, but... Then she took it out and put it back on the back. And uh, she was gasping for breath. And I said to the lady, um, almost finished combing my hair, I said, Linda, uh, I believe she needs prayer because she was gasping for breath but wasn't using her apparatus or whatever she has. And... Um, I said, could we pray for her? And she went over and asked the lady, could we pray for her? So Linda and I went over, and we laid hands on her right there in the beauty shop and prayed over her. Now, she was bent over like that, and, I mean, her face showed pain and hurt and everything. And... Uh, we laid hands on her, and we, we said, Father, we thank you for the opportunity of prayer. And we laid hands on her, and we prayed to the Father. I said, Father, we come to the throne of grace with confidence and full assurance that you hear us when we pray. And we're not praying in our name, we are praying in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, and we need help. This precious lady needs breath. I said, Father, would you breathe into her nostrils a breath of life? And would you clear out her lungs so they'll be clear so she can breathe? And Father, you are the way, you're the truth, you're the life. We speak life to her right now in Jesus' name. I speak strength to her in Jesus' name. I speak, I speak help to her in Jesus' name. And, uh, and I ask God to just cause every cell of her body to bring forth that harmony and balance that she needs in her entire body. I said her heart beats with the rhythm of life in Jesus' name. 
and we just name different parts of her body. We command them to function in the, that perfection to which God created them to function. In the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus is above all these issues. And in Jesus' name, we commit this situation, Father. And we thank you for it. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And I don't know the lady's name, but I said, God bless you. God is working in your life. And I said, have you received Jesus as your Savior? She said, yes. And I go to a Baptist church. And I said, God bless you, and you have a good day. So I went to the car where Bob was waiting for me, and Linda took her to the wash. But how, did she, how did she look after you prayed for her, Mom? Clear. Her face was, she sat up in the chair where she was sitting. She sat up in the chair, and her face was clear. And she walked to the water basin where Linda was going to start shampooing her hair. And uh, I wondered, how did that turn out? Because I went and got in the car. And uh, so I asked Linda Friday, how did it all turn out with uh, the lady we prayed for? She said, she went to the wash basin with no, nothing in her nose. And uh, I washed her hair, rolled it, put her under the dryer. And this lady loves to work puzzles. When she came in to the room Friday, she had her puzzle book. She didn't have her black satchel. And she looked great. And we just marveled. I marveled at the wisdom of our God. But God has given us power and authority over all the works of the devil. And all those things we took advantage of, authority over in the name of Jesus, she was clear. And she, I mean, she had a smile on her face instead of a frown. And we just, I'm still giving God all the glory and all the praise. And... I thank him, I thank him that he, he trusts us enough with his authority and his power that we can speak and it happens in Jesus' name. Thank you all for listening. That's just hey. a part of our life and I'm excited about Tuesday going to VA. And, uh, well, you know, darling, life and death is in the power of the tongue. You're right. And what we say every day, and it's a discipline. Yes. And sometimes I say the wrong thing, but my partner says, Honey, you think you should have said that? And I go, I didn't, sign, I didn't find that in the Bible. <laughs> so I shaped up, started speaking right. But you can help one another along that line. We need one another. I need my husband. Boy, I need you, baby. And I need you all. So, we need each other, amen. But we're still learning. We haven't arrived yet. We're still learning every day through life situations. Thank you, darling. You may be seated. And Thank I you. love my husband. Amen. Through it all. One for the road. Two to two. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you all for listening. You're welcome. Well, like I said, our service is a little bit different today. Uh, I know some others have testimonies. Michelle, you had some you want to share. And so, well, let me, uh, Michelle, share. I got some things I want to share, what the Lord has done. And, and uh, Darsh Cook has something. And uh, Mrs. Keys has something. And you may have something. So it's yours. Thank you. Are we able to put scriptures up on the board? Okay, fantastic. If you could put up um, 1 Corinthians 12.12. 12. So this is our last week with Rakari. We're sad. She's going back home. So we're going to miss her. 
Um, we had a fun class this morning where the kids, you know, based off the scripture, I'll tell you what we did. First Corinthians 12. Who was that? It's not up on this one. Amplified. It doesn't matter, whichever. Amplified is good. Because what I got to say, you can get it off any of those. But um, for just as the body is one. Oh, wait, I'm doing the scripture here. Just as the body is one and yet has many parts and all the parts, though many, form only one body, so it is with Christ. So in class today, we talked about our body parts. You know, like what body parts can you mention? Our eyes, our hair, our legs, our feet, our lungs, our heart, all these different body parts. Well, without one of those body parts, how would you function? I have a friend of mine who literally his big toe got infected. He has diabetes. He went in. He was supposed to be getting a heart stent, but because of this infection, they would not allow him to have the surgery yet. They said, well, we're going to have to take your big toe off. And, you know, that's used for balance and things, too. So they went ahead and removed his big toe. They sent him home and said, don't do anything. Just keep your foot up, elevated, let it heal. So he put his socks and shoes on and went outside and mowed the lawn sweat, bacteria, everything got involved. Next thing you know, he's got his leg amputated. And then he goes back, not to get graphic, but there were maggots in there, which is not a really bad thing because they do eat dead flesh, but they did have to clean it out. Went back in and said his other leg is rotting from the inside out. They had to take his other leg. So here he is with two less members than what he had, and he's having to learn how to function all over again. But how wonderful it is in the body of Christ when we all function and do our part, then someone else isn't trying to function because you're not there. And so in class today, we were talking about this, and um, I said, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to go into the pantry we're going to go. Miss Missy gave us permission to come into her classroom. I talked to her about this last week, and she said, yeah, bring them on in. And everyone was able to get one food item. And we broke off into two groups, and whatever food item they got was going to go in their casserole. So this group, we had three people. This group, we had three people. And whatever they got, we put in their casserole. And those casseroles are in that oven back there baking right now, and you get to partake. <laughs> One thing that we really wish we had was onions. And I started thinking about that. Oh, my goodness, if we had an onion. But the onion wasn't there. What would you do? I mean, how do we function in the body of Christ if something is missing? We just kind of wing it. We do what we have to, but wouldn't it be wonderful if we didn't have to do that? We just all did our part. And I also talked about, um, and you could turn to uh, Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. Ephesians 4, 15 and 16. And we don't know what the flavor is going to be in these casseroles. I can tell you that it did come together pretty well. And we are inviting you after the service to come back and taste and try and encourage our youth. They are getting ready to start school again, and so we're going to send them off with a bang. Um, let's read this scripture. But speaking the truth in love, in all things, both our speech and our lives, expressing his truth, what, remember what Miss Susan was sharing, let us grow up in all things unto him, following his example, who is the head, Christ. Verse 16, from him, the whole body, the church, and all its various parts, joined and knitted firmly together by what every joint supplies. I just supplied Pastor Bob his, his cane. What are we doing, you know, to help each other throughout the day or as we're doing things? What every joint supplies. When each part is working properly, it causes the body to grow and mature, building itself up in unselfish love. And, you know, the body of Christ for a long time has been very immature. That's why right there. 
because we're not doing our part. The gifts that have been given to us are not just for us. They're for everyone else. God uses those gifts he put in us to flow through us. And as that happens, we're encouraged. We're, we're built up like, yeah, we're doing our part. We're functioning. We're not atrophy laying that. We're doing our part. And even Pastor Bob and what he's been through in the past couple of years and Susan, he's still doing his part. I mean, what an example of what we are to do as well. And I'm not scolding anyone for not doing your part. Everyone here, I know, you guys are always doing what you know to do and worshiping the Lord. But just know that even the littlest things you do is important. It's so important. Very, you are valuable to us in the body, to this church, and you're valuable to God. And you're being used by God. Just the smile on your face probably lights up the whole room, you know, whenever you come in and are blessing people. I miss Sheila. You know, praise God. So I just want to encourage you, and I'll leave you with this. I was reading in Samuel, and this might be yesterday's manna, but I just got to tell you, it blessed me so much. In 1 Samuel chapter 1, verse 18, but don't put it on the board yet, you have the story of... Elkanah, who's the husband, and Hannah, his wife. He had another wife, and we're just going to call her Penny because I don't know how to say her name. Penani or Penna or something like that. Well, Miss Penny, she was full of herself. She had sons and daughters and would love to just come up to Miss Hannah and say, "Mm mm-hmm, you don't have any kids, but I do. She just rubbed it in her face. Every year they would go up to Shiloh to worship the Lord. She had all this stuff to sacrifice with because Elkanah, the husband, would give what they needed for the sacrifice that year. And so here's Penny going up there with all her sacrifices for her and her children, and here's Hannah with no children. But you know what her husband did? He gave her a double portion. And some people will look at that and say, a double portion, what she need two portions for? But Elkanah was giving her her portion and the portion of the son she did not yet have. He was stepping out in faith, believing that one day God would give him a son through his favorite wife, Hannah. So it happened where they got up there and here's Penny harassing her and Shiloh. And, of course, Hannah's crying. She's right there at the temple. We know the story where the priest Eli is there, and he's, like, thinking she's drunk because her mouth is moving, but there's no noise coming out, and she's just weeping. And he says, you know, this woman's drunk. You know, what's your problem? And she's like, no, I'm, I, I'm praying, you know. They have a little chat. And he said, well, whatever it is you're asking God for, may it be granted to you. And you know what she did? Let's put that scripture up. 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 18. Hannah said, Let your maidservant find grace and favor in your sight. So the woman went on her way, and she ate, and her face was no longer sad. Was she pregnant yet? No. She believed what Eli told her was going to happen, and so her faith, along with her husband's faith, Faith, she walked away. She dried her face and she walked away in peace. With peace, settled, knowing that God would do his part. Folks, if we do our part, God will do his part. And so, all the parts and pieces working together, his plan will be fulfilled. So just be encouraged, no matter what you've been crying out for. If you don't feel like, oh, I'm just a worm in the cabbage patch, or I'm not really doing a whole lot, be encouraged. Whatever God has given you, if you cut hair, cut it unto the Lord. You know, if you're moving boats, move them unto the Lord. Whatever you're doing, no matter where you are, just share the Lord, and he will encourage your heart as you're ministering to others. Amen? So, again, after the
I know Ms. Susan said the girls are going to be passing out the documents on the way out here near the front door. They, they will still stand over here and do that. But after you get that, go through those doors into the fellowship hall because we have some goodies for you. All right? Amen. Uh, Mrs. Keys, you have something you want to share? Yeah, come on up. Can you come up? We can't, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. Yeah. Yeah, put, yeah, put, put it at least that close to her lips, okay? Okay. I thought I'd be able to talk loud enough, but okay, baby. One of my precious ones. <laughs> I, I am just so blessed that... Um, I am so blessed that uh, I'm still alive, that I can see my children, my grandchildren. I know if my husband was here, he would have been overjoyed because he just was wanting grandchildren. And now we got grandchildren and they're growing up so fast. And I'm blessed, I'm alive and I'm well and I'm here to see them. And I just want to say something to these young people because um, if he was here, he would have been celebrating every year. Those who know him when we had the young ones in our, our midst know that every time when school let out, it was time to celebrate. School is out. And when it was time to go back to school, we celebrate. School was going back in. So I just want to bless these young folks, all of the ones that are still going back to school, especially my grandchildren and my other precious one who's getting ready to leave me again. But I just want to bless them and let them know that God is with you all. He's going to protect you. He's going to look after you. There's so much going on in schools today. There's so much going on all around. But you guys are special, and God is going to look out for you. And I just want to speak the, the priestly blessing over you guys and, um, and over your school, your teachers, your principal, all of those that's connected to that school that's going to have something to do with each one of you. And I just want to speak the priestly blessing over you guys. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you all and give you peace and courage and confidence and favor in the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you, darling. Okay, ma'am. I forgot one thing. Uh, Lisa and I, we uh, were talking about Daddy um, um, recently, and we decided that we wanted to give them a treat in his honor. And Lisa was in that kitchen. She made some yummy yummies. She got, she's doing her part. <laughs> she, made, uh, she made some yummy yummies. And so um, we also have a treat for the back to schoolers and to be enjoyed by all since there should be some yummy, yummy stuff back there. Thank you. Wow. All right, Dars, let us have it. Let me say something, when you come up and talk with the mic, you gotta raise your voice a little bit and have it close to you, cause we gotta get it on the DVD, because when we put it on our telephone, not telephone, but when we put it on our 
TV, we want to hear what you say. So it's important that you have it close to your mouth and you speak a little louder where everybody can hear. And everybody said? Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bob. First of all, I want to say thank you to each and every one with praying for my brother. He has found the job as of last week. So thank God for that. And also on last week, my dad's unit, my dad is going to be with the Lord, but my uncle is at the house now. And the unit went out, AC unit, and then the AC unit on my car in the rear, it decided to go out. So with all that, there was a lot that was going on, but God, but God. So the AC person that came, they went ahead and put a new unit in, and that was on Thursday. And on Saturday, my uncle has it at 72, but it's like 86. So I knew something just was not, not right. So I went ahead and I called him, and this was on Saturday. I couldn't get an answer. I said, well, you know, it's the weekend. I'm quite sure that he want to spend some time with his family, So, but I left a message. So Saturday and then Sunday and then Monday, I hadn't heard anything. And that wasn't like, wasn't like him at all. And then here it is on Tuesday, and I still hadn't heard anything. So I went ahead and brought in the third person who told me about him. And he said, well, Ms. Cook, I will go ahead and send an email. And as soon as I hear from him, then I will go ahead and contact you. I'm thinking about $6,800 right now. And I was starting to feel some kind of way. <laughs> So in turn, I just went and got on my knees and I started praying. And I started blessing this young man. Like Pastor Bob would share with us. You know, we bless those, we pray for those. I, after the prayer, I went and checked my phone and there was a text message from Mr. Singleton. I'm like, God, whoo, he answers prayers real quickly, okay? Yeah. All right, but I had to get myself in line because I was feeling some kind of way. But bless God. He said, good morning. He said, Ms. Cook, I have been in jail since Thursday. Since Thursday. He's, in other words, when I called and reached out to him, he said that when I left your home, my son called and said, Dad, the police officers are here. He says, why are the police officers at my house at this time of the night? So he told his son to tell the police officers, Berkeley County, that he would just come down there the next morning, to which he did. And he said as soon as he got there, he gave his name, they took his phone and put it in a plastic bag, and he was there for four days relationship and I say relationship he said three years ago he had this relationship with this young lady and now they said that he had a child and he did not know anything about this so when he goes before the judge and the judge asks him the question and he said judge I have no idea so the judge told him that you should go and have a paternity test. So he went ahead and he released him. So he comes over and he's sharing, he's sharing, he's sharing. Then he also shared some of the things that he was experiencing while he was in there. One thing he did not, he didn't, he didn't have much of an appetite, he couldn't eat, but he noticed just one person. He said, a, weighed maybe about 80 pounds if he was wearing boots. And he's like, what with this person? He looks so innocent. You know, why? So he asked him, he said, well, if you don't mind, would you tell me why are you in here? And he said, no, you're, you're probably just judge me. 
He said, okay, I respect that. So he said he went ahead and laid down. But then the next day, the young man came to him, and he said, Mr. Singleton, can I share with you why I'm in here? And he said, well, if you like, yes, you can. And he said that his a friend of his had given him acid. And he took that acid, and he was just totally gone, hallucinating. And his partner, who is dead, buried, started talking to him and said, I want you to come and get me. I want you to come and get me. He literally goes grave robbing is what he did. And he went ahead and dug up his, his partner. So as he was riding down town, he said that the speed that he was going, he got stopped by the police officer. And when the police officer came to the car and he looked in the back, he said, you started Halloween a little early, haven't you? And he said, no, but my partner said, and at that point they went ahead and they locked him up. They locked him up. So Mr. Singleton shared just the things that he saw and he witnessed. So I'm listening and I'm listening and then I asked him a question. I said, well, let me ask you that. I said, I believe there's a reason why you went through what you went through. Have you accepted Christ as your personal savior? And he just looked at me like, what are you asking me? But we talked and we went through Romans 10, 9, and 10. And that young man accepted Christ as his personal savior. So I just bless God for that. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory. Yes, indeed. Yes, God. Thank you, Doris. Wow. And that's my intention of uh, teaching on the Holy Spirit, that we'll be more attentive to him. Um, when you see that, no, no longer sad. When you see somebody coming in sad, they need prayer. You can learn to read faces. The young lady, the Lord had something for the young lady that left early. I was going to call her up, and God was going to—I was going to pray for her because I know she needed it in the spirit. But she left. But pray for her anyway, and I want to do that now. Lord, we pray for our sister that left. God, that you would just touch her, and I know Michelle shared some things with her out the door. God, be with their family, and we thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now look at that scripture. And so the woman went on her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. And I thought about the woman that you prayed for. She was no more sad. She was glad. So don't be sad. Be glad. But that takes the Holy Spirit many times. As we allow the Holy Spirit to work through these bodies, which we are the body of Christ, just like if it was Christ himself was here, he works through different parts of us to bless people. So you must see that, that we're all part of that. And we pray one for another. And we love our neighbor like we love ourselves. Somebody else have anything? I got something I want to share. Anybody else that want to share anything about the last week or something? What you got, Mom? Well, come on up. I just accidentally was reading Psalm 23 in the Living Bible, and I wanted to read some more scripture, so I came to this one. It's uh, Psalm 25, verse 3. None who have faith in God will ever be disgraced for trusting him. So no one of us that have faith has faith in God will ever be disgraced for trusting him. Amen. So don't be afraid to trust God. 
or let anybody know you're trusting God, you'll never be disgraced for trusting him. Don't worry about your critics. They'll always be around. You look at, you read Acts chapter 2 on Pentecost. There were some that believed and there was those that criticized. They said, these men are drunk. And Peter said, no, it's 9 o'clock in the morning. And we don't get drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. But you'll always have your critics. Pray for them. Bless them. And God will bless you as you bless them. And they'll get blessed down the road. So remember that. Critics are all around. But God is bigger than all the critics. Amen. So remember that. Be strong. God told, God told, uh, I'm trying to think of his name now. Hold on, I'll get it. Joshua, be strong and courageous, for the Lord thy God is with you. And if he's with you, who do you care that's against them? That's why we have to pray for them. Amen. Well, anyway, we told everybody about our air conditioning. We got a new one in. And um, anyway, when we got our electric bill, it was $560.61. Wow. Lord, where are you? <laughs> it didn't move the Lord. He, he owns everything. But anyway, we just wonder, well, what in the world's going on? So we called the air conditioner man, the people that put the new one in, which was $12,000. He checked everything over. See, I want you to see how God works. He's working, and he might, you might, it, it, it looks like he ain't working now, but he's working. But see, he came, he checked everything out, and everything was good. But ever since he checked it out, we noticed the air condition is better. <laughs> he probably didn't want to say that he found something wrong because that makes the company look bad. But nevertheless, no problem. But it's working good now. He said, but maybe it's your hot water heater that's causing your electricity to go up. I said, boing. Thank you kindly. So we called the plumber to come out and check our uh, Hot water heater. Now, I used to do all of those things myself, but I can't do those things anymore. I can do them, but I can't get in those positions that I used to. You know what I mean? <laughs> it hurts the body. So anyway, it took a day and a half before the plumber came out, of course. Uh, we, said, now, we told the lady, now make sure he comes to the back door. Well, he came to the front door. I said, well, Lord, what's wrong with them folks? So I opened the door. He said, you called for the plumber? I said, yes. It's your hot water heater? He said, yeah, I think it is. He says, I hear water running under your house. I got hearing aids that can pick up China, but <laughs> I didn't hear the water run. I said, he, I said, well, check it out then. So he got the skirting down, went under the house. He found two water leaks. One was the hot water running week after week, just pumping our electricity up because it's 220, you know. And uh, the water bill went up, see. So he fixed both of them. And uh, he says about, do you have this on your hot water heater? It's like a round container that you hook up in there and it's supposed to, save your pipes from busting. I said, yeah, put it in there. How much is that? Oh, just 500 and some dollars. Well, put it in there. <laughs> well, anyway, when he left, we paid him, uh, I think, $1,700 for the whole nine thing. But anyway, he was outside. I said, come on inside. I want to sit down and uh, we'll talk. So he come on in and wrote the receipt up and everything, and we paid him. And then I began to get a switch over to the spiritual side. So you always switch over to the spiritual side. 
left. I said, you know, the Bible talks about Joshua. You know what God told Joshua? That was his name. His name was Joshua. Be strong and courageous, for the Lord thy God is with you wherever you go. You say, wow. And I said, by the way, let me tell you about Jesus. So I explained the salvation message to him. And then Susan spoke up and said, have you ever accepted him as your Lord? And he says, no. And she said, would you like to do it right now? And he said, yes. So I led him to the Lord right there in our living room. We gave him a Bible, some tracts, blessed him, prayed for him, sent him off. <coughs> well, see, there's opportunities all around to share the good news with people. And the Bible says, if thy will, if thy will confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and if thy will believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. He made it so simple. It's not complicated. Very simple. Jesus said, he that believeth in me, that is in Jesus, shall never die. And, you, you know, I used to think, well, I see people die all the time. I go to funerals a lot of times, and they seem to die. Yeah, that's the outer man. See, Bob, the outer man is like a shell, an a, a egg shell. The egg shell serves its purpose. But when that bitty in there has totally was, com was conformed into a bitty, as we are conformed into the image of Christ, that shell breaks. And that bitty comes out, a bitty, a beautiful little bitty. And that's what happens to us. When these old shells that we live in break open and quit breathing, our little self comes out, our spirit man comes out, and fly away, fly away. People say don't understand that, but see, once you accept Christ, he comes into your life and he does a work in you. Philippians 1, 6 says, For it is God working in you. Notice, making you willing to do his good pleasure. Because we're not willing in our own selves. But he makes us willing. And then your life begins to change. Little by little. Being changed from, from glory to glory. How? By our effort by our good looks, by our works, no, by the Spirit of God. Let's pray. Thank you, God, that you're working in all of our lives, making ambassadors out of us, that we will reach out and touch people with Christ. We thank you for that now and for everybody that participated today. Thank you for all your children everywhere. We want you to know, Lord, that we love you with all our hearts, so mind, and strength. And we thank you, God, that you are our strength, our shield, our buckler, our very life. And we thank you for it now. And all of God's people said, Amen. God bless you. If you need prayer, come up. We'll be glad to pray for you. If not, uh, go out the front door and get your uh, telephone directory and your uh, financial report of last year of what the expenses of the church was. God bless. Have a great day.